Hello YouTube. In this video we're going to take a look at this uh, beast of a system that we see right here. In fact, this used to be a server at some point for a company that uh, bought a couple of cases from back in the day. Originally had a Core 2 Duo and these systems were originally running uh, Windows Server 2003. So that's the story behind the case here. Uh, what's in here at the moment is an Athlon XP build. I always like doing a bit theme builds to see uh, what I can get them to run and to see if they can uh, fill in the void of retro gaming from certain eras that uh, no longer properly function on uh, Windows 10 or Windows 8 or whatever or are any uh, other operating system like Linux or Mac so uh, that's why I built this thing of course it has a door which is very sexy as you all know and behind it as you can see, this, this case is absolute tank. We have a DVD ROM drive, I think. No, this is actually a DVD burner. And a floppy drive. And uh, everything else is just basic. There is uh, foam in here. So it, uh, it does dust filtration as well as keeping the noise out. Which is neato. And there's also a shit ton of fans around the system anyway. Uh, of which some are not connected because this motherboard does not uh, support as many fans as I would like. But that's not really a problem. Because I don't really need that, man that many fans anyway. So let's move on to the side here. So we can remove the door. And show the internals. Alright. There we go. Now we can get a good look of what's inside there. There we go. Power supply, the master watt 500 watt light. I bought this power supply so it can also function as a secondary power supply if my main system were to go out. So that's pretty nice to have. Uh, so the 500 watt power supply, but, uh, it's a modern one, so it's lacking some uh, Molex connectors. So I have to split and uh, and stuff here and there, but that's okay. In terms of RAM, we got all three slots populated on this motherboard, which is a uh, Chief Tech, of uh, Chief Tech Chain Tech Seven NGS Zenith, which is a very high-end uh, Enforce Two board, 400 megahertz DDR400 memory. Got a gigabyte installed in three slots, and it's running a dual channel. The dual channel architecture of this board is actually very interesting. You need to populate slot one and three, or zero and two, uh, in which way you want to count it, with uh, half the capacity of slot 2 and that way if you have the same settings in CL and whatnot you can run dual channel memory so I've got 256 here, 256 here and a 512 there and that will run this system in dual channel 1 gigabyte so that's pretty nice I mean I could have gone with like uh, 2 gigs I can do that, I have the memory for that but uh, I think that's overkill for an Athlon XP and uh, Underneath this uh, glacial tech cooler here, I just can't get rid of this this freaking connector here, is an Athlon XP Barton 3200 Plus, so the highest end uh, Athlon XP ever made. It's running at 2.2 gigahertz, and I suppose I could overclock it if I wanted to, but it's running very nice and cool under this glacial tech cooler, so uh, I'm fine with that. In terms of video card, right here we have uh, an ATI Radeon X1650, I think it was. I actually forgot. <laughs> Uh, it might be an X1600 Pro, I forgot, I think it's, uh, yeah, anyways, there's a nice uh, beefy quiet cooler on there, so that's pretty neat, and down here we have a sound card, which is a Sound Blaster uh, 5.1 VX, which is a pretty decent sound card overall, I got that for basically free, so I figured, well, I'll put it in here, in terms of hard drive, we have just a single pattern hard drive, it's not a single platter drive, but it's a single platter drive. You know, commas and whatever, and spaces. Uh, I think it is, was in, it's, a, it's a 160 gig, I think. Yeah, I built the system a while ago, so I just... some, some time, Sometimes I forget about the details. That's just the way it is. I currently don't have the floppy drive hooked up because I had some... Uh, problem with the amount of Molex connectors because as you can see here 
the uh, video card requires some external power over a floppy connector. It's pretty typical for HEP cards of the time to have a Molex connector there instead of a uh, floppy connector. So I was hoping it was Molex because I have plenty of adapters for that, but I don't have any splitters that split Molex to floppy as well. And uh, this power supply only has a single floppy connector. So, once again, another splitter. This can only cause fire. Oh well. So we need to apply that as well in order to get our floppy working. As a matter of fact, let's do that right now, so we can finish the system up. Alright, got a little bit more light, so we can actually see what the hell I'm doing. And now we can connect the floppy ribbon cable. I know I have a black Asus floppy cable somewhere, but this case does not have a window anyway. So who would care? Alright, so that's the data cable. Now we need to figure out a power situation. Let's see, where do I want to split from? Probably best to do that from the optical drive, because I think that'll reach nicely. Let's pull that out. Let's see here. Well, as a matter of fact, I don't think I'll reach at all, but... Well, they should leave a little bit of a test fit here. That goes there, and then they'll have to go there. It'll barely reach, but it'll reach. Okay. Good, now that's sorted. Just gotta match these up. These adapters are always a bit wonky. I'll connect the floppy first and then we'll see where we're, end up, where we're gonna end up. There we go. I think that's on. Yeah. And. Lastly, connect the optical drive. The problem with these adapters is that the cables are not always aligned properly, so it doesn't match up with the connector on the device you're connecting to. So that's just... That's crap. Okay. Some nice motherboard flex there. Go. I got that connected as well. I'm really glad I uh, got one of these clear rounded IDE cables. It certainly looks a hell of a lot nicer than all those wide ones. So yeah, that pretty much concludes the outside tour of the machine. I think the logical next step would be to actually turn it on and see if it works. So uh, let me get a uh, monitor and some keyboard and mouse stuff, whatever, and. Uh, see what it can do. Alright, looks like we're good to go. Let's power it on. Mmm, nice. Of course we have a CMOS checksum error because the system hasn't been used in a while. And because the uh, CMOS battery in this thing is absolutely shot. See if I can stop it here. Ah, crap, it's gonna boot into XP. No! I should have pressed delete, not F1. Because now the CPU is running at 1.1 gigahertz. Come on, you son of a bitch. Post! This always happens when you're recording video. Same. There we go. AMD hardware of this era is really unpredictable sometimes. Which is why I love it. <laughs> uh, put that on CD-ROM, put that on HDD0. Floppy Seek, of course, that's retro, you like that. System performance optimal, yeah. We'll put on turbo. We'll Clock the shit out of it. Uh, 
No, we can raise the aperture size. Memory on this isn't that much slower than it is on the video card itself, so that should be good. Everything else should not be touched, I think. Let's see if it really uh, recognizes our Athlon XP3200 now. Yes, it does. One gig of RAM. It's so weird. If you just enter the BIOS and just load optimized defaults and leave, and it will just work fine. It's weird. That's gonna nag, just start as normal. Thank you. By the way, the keyboard that I'm using, head down to the ear, is a good old fashioned Dell AT101W, the uh, rarer black version with the black app switches. I used to use this keyboard, actually, I daily this keyboard for a long time, and uh, it is now. Uh, for my secondary systems and for testing and for to play retro games, I typically want typically play them on this one because it's a very nice uh, keyboard overall. And then we wish for Windows XP to load up, and there it is. Let's give it a little bit of zoom there on this gorgeous <laughs> monitor made made by the ever so great. <laughs> Company Acer. I think I gave myself AIDS. Just saying that anyway. Well, Catalyst crashed. That's a good sign. You know you're in for a treat when the video driver suddenly starts crashing on you. Oh, I actually didn't even install the uh, sound driver yet. Oh god. I forgot about that. I just put it in there and put the system away in storage for a while. You say the RAID controller is not installed either. Is it SATA RAID? Actually, no, it's IDE RAID. Anyway. By the way, the one missing link, what kind of drive was this? Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a 160 gig drive, yeah. We've got a 40 gig partition that's, that contains Windows. And we've got an 88 gigabyte partition, roughly. So that's about right. Anyways, so this is the system, as you can see. We'll lower the resolution so we can get a better picture of what's going on on the screen because zooming does not improve everything. Uh, 720. Go. It was an X1650, actually, the Radeon video card. So, some kind of software that I've got on here. We've got uh, Microsoft Office XP, Office 2002, whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to set up my mail on this. I actually did a mail migration at work from Office 2000 to uh, Office 365. And uh, that was such an ordeal that I really don't uh, want to go through old versions of Outlook anymore. Let's put it that way. So, Word, which is nice. I haven't bothered to update Media Player because I think Media Player 9 is more nostalgic. I really don't like uh, Media Player 10 and 11 that much. Of course, the very important Windows Movie Maker. Still not my favorite version of Movie Maker. That was the version that was included with Windows Vista. So there's that. I remember a time when uh, Windows 7 came out and Windows Movie Maker was no longer included. Microsoft offered you to download the version from XP for free. And I was like, I don't want that. I want the Vista version. And they were like, yeah, well, I have yours. That's not going to happen. Use the XP version instead. And I was like, fuck XP. I want Vista. I was actually really not disliking Vista at the time. I actually never disliked Vista that much. So, so there's that. But anyways, it seems that the video driver is working normally, despite uh, Catalyst just completely shitting over itself. But it's a Radeon X1650, so... In fact, while we're at it, let's actually uh, run a benchmark. Yeah. No, I don't have a, a key, because this is illegal as all hell. Uh, let's see here. Let's enable time demo. 
and let's demo the four. A demo. This is Quake 3 at fully max settings, 1024, 768, I think. Yep. 198.5 frames per second. This kind of feels like a bit uh, 3D game man type of deal. <laughs> if there are still people out there that remember Ronnie Reynolds. He made some kick-ass uh, component reviews back in the day when uh, there wasn't really much of a video platform to watch video reviews on. Way back when. Used to like his stuff. So let's now run Unreal Tournament 2003. This is also running at max settings and now I'm running at the 1280 by 960 resolution so we can get a good idea of what the system performs like. There's really quite, quite a beefy combination, this Athlon XP with the X1650. I'm actually fairly sure that the X1650 uh, is bottlenecked slightly by the uh, old Athlon XP, being like a 2002 chip and a 2005 video card, so, well, it was a mid-range video card anyway. But uh, the thing is, I also tested a Radeon 9600 TX, yes, not an XT, a TX, it's a medium card. And that got pretty much the same performance, about 10% less, so... Yeah. So I'm thinking there is a slight bottleneck going on, but not much. So it just, should just stick to the higher resolutions, because it's a 256 meg video card, so it should be able to uh, squeeze out some good frame rates in uh, games from the era. And for an Athlon XP, the system is also reasonably quiet. It's not that bad. This is the kind of noise that just turns into white noise. It's not really any of that high-pitched misery that you had back in the day sometimes. The hard drive is fairly quiet. It doesn't whine a lot. The fans don't whine at all. They're just white noise. So I guess the system is pretty tolerable day to day. And yeah, this game is looking pretty good for 2003, gotta say. This, uh, this was pretty much uh, Unreal Engine 2, still running in DirectX 8.1 mode. And Unreal Tournament 2004 was the first one to actually introduce DirectX 9 support. And that does look quite a bit better. You can really see the enhancements that DirectX 9 offered back in the day, which are just completely irrelevant now with DirectX 12. Although I haven't seen any real visual benefits coming from DirectX 12, maybe because it's still so new. But uh, going from DirectX 9 to 10 was definitely a very big step. Of course, the uh, main example for that was Flight Simulator 10, or X, or whatever you want to call it. It was released with the Windows Vista and DirectX 10, so... And then came DirectX 11, which, uh, which is the main uh, traction from that was uh, tessellation, so those were pretty noticeable steps. Anyway, so uh, we've got 71 FPS on a bot match, which is mainly CPU bound, and the flyby, which is mainly GPU bound, can produce 180 frames per second. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, I don't think there's a hell of a lot uh, beside this to uh, show you guys. Of course, I've got my favorite shooter game ever, <laughs> Unreal Tournament uh, 1999, Game of the Year Edition. Uh, that runs very well on this, uh, as well as you might imagine. It's one of those games from an era where some games were very, very time sensitive. This one is definitely no exception. Anyways, I'm going to quit this. I'm going uh, gonna to end the video here. Gonna shut the system down and all that good stuff. I hope you enjoyed this uh, overview of this Athlon XP build. I uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.